Varices are one of the most feared complications of cirrhosis. Let's discuss how varices form and some of their associated conditions. Hi, I'm Mark Cooper, board certified gastroenterologist. I manage liver disease and complications such as varices every day. So let's discuss what varices are. Simply put, they're large swollen veins. Why would veins in your GI tract swell? Most of the blood in your GI tract, as well as your spleen, drains into your liver by way of the portal system. This portal system carries nutrients from your intestine to your liver, which is central to cleansing toxins, clearing bacteria, and processing those nutrients. So it is important that the blood of the portal system flows into your liver so that it can be processed before entering the main circulation of your body. When a person has scarring or inflammation in their liver, blood doesn't flow easily through the liver. It's like rush hour traffic. When a highway gets congested, people exit the road to find alternate routes home. When the liver becomes congested, blood in the portal system needs to find an alternate route home to the heart. And the esophagus provides a great shortcut to bypass the congested liver and return to the heart more easily. The esophagus veins are not really meant to carry much traffic, so they quickly themselves become overwhelmed with that increased blood flow. They can swell and they risk bursting. These are varices, and when they burst, it causes a variceal bleed. As liver disease causes scar and inflammation to build in the liver, its pressure rises, a phenomenon we call portal hypertension. Now, we're all familiar with hypertension that we measure with a blood pressure cuff, and we usually think of that being high, like a systolic blood pressure of over 140. Portal hypertension, we can't measure with a blood pressure cuff. We have to do specialized procedures. We also see relatively low pressures. Even a pressure over six is considered elevated, and as pressures rise over 10, it can be dangerous, and that's when people are at particular risk of developing varices, and as they mount higher, they're at risk of those varices bleeding. Varices are most common in the esophagus, and we can also see them extend down into the stomach. They're not uncommon in the rectum, and we will at times also see them in the small bowel. A similar condition is called portal hypertensive gastropathy. This involves the lining of the stomach becoming swollen and engorged with blood. And this can bleed, but not brisk like a variceal bleed. It's more of a slow ooze, but can result in anemia in patients that have liver disease. There's also a rare complication of portal hypertensive enteropathy, which is the same phenomenon occurring in the intestines. It's important to identify these bleeding complications of cirrhosis early in their course so that we can prevent their worst complications. When a patient with cirrhosis displays any signs of portal hypertension, we like to perform an EGD to look for these complications of varices and portal hypertensive gastropathy. We'll discuss how an EGD along with a procedure called banding can reduce the risk of varices, as well as medications that can reduce the complications of portal hypertension in a separate video. So please subscribe to be alerted to new content as we discuss more complications of liver disease.